So I'm here with my longtime friend now, Ada Calhoun. We've known each other for a couple weeks or a couple minutes, depending how you count it. Um, and you're on in the middle of a book tour, right? Yes, I am. Yeah. So what's the book you're uh, touring? Oh, there it is. It's yeah. called. It might be backward though. So yeah, it looks right to me. Wedding yeah. toast I'll never give. Okay, good. So um, what is this book, Wedding Toasts I'll Never Give? What's it all about? Um, so I wrote a story for the New York Times a couple years ago, and it was about fighting with my husband while I was going to a lot of weddings. And it was sort of about the um, difference between what we say when we get married and then how it turns out. So it was the toast I'll never give, and then I wrote six more. So it's seven toasts I would never give to people who are getting married because they don't want to hear the truth. So, yeah, we all go to all these weddings and they're kind of fun and they're kind of boring and they're kind of wild. And, you know, it depends on the wedding. But you were hearing all these, um, you know, toasts by the groom, by the by the bride and by probably their their good friends saying how it was going to be perfect and heavenly and easy and delightful. <laughs> and meanwhile, you're, you know, texting with your husband about whatever it was, flights or something? Yeah, a lot of, he was, he'd messed up some plane tickets pretty badly and I was really mad. Yeah. Right. So, and you're, meanwhile, hearing these like toasts about the happily ever after that's going to surely come. So what, so what was the toast you'll never give? What did, what was the basic kind of wisdom from your perspective you wanted to share? It was basically that you'll suffer, that there will be suffering and that it doesn't mean you're doomed to divorce and it doesn't mean that you're doing it wrong just because it's hard and it's, um, you have moments of rage, you have moments of wanting to be, you know, have the whole place to yourself and um, that's part of marriage. And I think people don't always acknowledge that that's yeah. an inevitable part of marriage, but it yeah. is. Well, it's just a basic human truth or I come from the Buddhist tradition. If you acknowledge something, yeah. then it actually can be okay and it can even be kind of funny and kind of tender and kind of, you can get through it. Well, it's both, right? And actually the book has, people do say this book is kind of Buddhist because it's, um, and maybe that's because I majored in Sanskrit, that leaked in a little, but right. um, it, you know, it's about how suffering and joy are intertwined. You can't really have one without the other. So I guess the basic question from a total idiot personified by myself would be, if it is so hard and suffering is involved, what is it worth it? There's a payoff. It really, yeah. it's it's more, right? It's more suffering and it's more joy. So you get you get you get both things in a in a good marriage and a marriage that lasts. Um, That's beautiful. And I think That's that the toast I want to hear right there. Good. It's richer, <laughs> it's fuller, it's deeper, it's harder, and it's yeah. better. It's all well, this. It challenges you, right? It makes you um makes you compromise. It makes you get outside yourself. And, um, and find ways to be with this other person. So it's creative and it's brave um, and it's incredibly difficult, but in, I think it makes you grow as a person. So, so given that you're you know, the author of some of the most popular modern love articles on the New York Times and now this book, Wedding Toast I'll Never Give, are you, are you ever sick of this subject talking about real love kind of? Um, I do a lot of different reporting and yeah. I find a lot of things. So, um, and I've only really been on this book tour for a couple weeks and it's been super fun to talk about because people really, once they start opening up, like I think the first, the first round of, of conversation is always, my marriage is fine. It's totally fine. And then people start talking and it gets really interesting really fast. I, I've had a couple of readings that turned into this sort of group therapy sessions where people were talking in great detail about all of their drama it was yeah. fascinating yeah there's probably a lot of pent-up desire or need for married couples everywhere to kind of just acknowledge stuff and kind of be able to laugh and cry and just open up about it i think it helps i and for me i'd read a lot of about marriage a lot of people's accounts of marriage and it often seemed like they were pulling their punches like they were trying not to offend the person they were married to or right. the book was written after the person had died or there, there were sort of ways around it and so this book is not at all like advice or self-help or like nobody's going to pick up that book and be like, well, she has it all figured out. Like, right. I don't right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a key point, too, because I think anyone healthy or, um, you know, someone we would respect doesn't um, doesn't want to listen to advice from someone who claims to have it all figured out. 
Yeah, it's impossible, right? Marriage is really complicated and it changes all the time. Yeah. And I think that to, if anybody who says that they they understand marriage or parenting or love or anything like that through and through, I don't ever buy it. Yeah, I uh, I wrote a book as as you know, we did a book reading in Boulder together. Oh, sort of what's that? It's a lovely book. My right. son just my son just grabbed he was like, I want to read that. It looks so good. Like oh, he, Yeah. Well, I'd be honored, yeah. But, you know, I was writing more from the being afraid of commitment perspective. Um, and uh, and then people once in a while would be like, oh, you wrote a book about love. You know, you must you must be claiming in a sense that you get it, that you yeah. have some Buddhist wisdom on it. And I was like, no, I'm writing from similar to what you said. I'm writing from the perspective of someone trying to figure it out and having some, in your case, your own experiences, your reference point perhaps in my case i don't really have the experience so i was going off the buddhist wisdom on it yeah just, uh, i think yeah. they're similar and it was funny doing the reading with you because i think they are coming at this same idea from two different directions but i think they were related in this way like your book is really vulnerable it's about what you want and about desire and i think that's it's so great especially to hear like a man talking honestly about those things so yeah well, yeah, some of the most, I guess I'm curious about that. Some of the more satisfying moments I've had with the book are when men are reading it, you know, not just giving it to their girlfriend or partner, but no. actually reading is yeah. it's, it's funny that men often don't feel, even myself, when I read the book, I get kind of embarrassed. We feel, we don't feel empowered to really try to figure this out or contemplate this culturally right. maybe. and to admit and to admit that kind of longing it's what's interesting i think is for women it's harder to admit to like lust or sexual desire but i think for men it's harder to admit yeah. that kind of romantic desire that you talk about in your book yeah that's really well said and that's such an unhealthy uh dynamic that men love to like brag about sex right and at least historically you know there's been a fair amount of sl slut shaming and yeah, for sure about with women and then on the other hand, yeah, we're, we're like embarrassed to talk about how uncomfortable or afraid we might get about commitment or, you know, anyway. No, it's really interesting. And it, when one person said about my book, this other um, reporter, he was, he was like, oh, it's really, you know, it's, it's brave for you to, and I was like, why? Because there's like sex in it? He's like, no, because there's desire in it. And for women yeah. to talk about that aspect yeah. of sexuality, he was saying yeah. it's something that it's it's still taboo, fun, weirdly enough, right? Yeah, that's one of those moments where you say, "Wow, it's 2017. Aren't we, aren't we past all that?" I think there's a lot of things we thought we were past that we're not past. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well said. Yeah, without going into politics, well said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess if you were to talk, I mean, this is probably a, a kind of go-to question when people interview you, but it's still one I kind of want to know. If you were to talk with your younger self pre-marriage yeah. and you had like five minutes, <laughs> say like two things, what would you tell your, you know, pre-marriage self about to go into marriage? What would you say? I think my pre-marriage self would never have listened to me. I think that people right. try to tell me things and I, right. you know, and they, you can be like, oh, okay, so it'll be hard. I get it. But you don't, I think there's anything worthwhile in life. You, you don't really know until you're in it, what it's going to be like. Um, somebody, this woman told me, you know, oh, you're getting married. Congratulations. The first 20 years are the hardest. Right. And I was like, thanks. Right. You know, I thought, yeah. I thought she was joking. She wasn't joking. True. Wow. Wow. Um, and then, but also I just, I didn't take it seriously. I didn't know. And I also, I thought, I think you always think you're exceptional. I think, you know, in, when you suffer and when you have hard times, you think you're exceptional in your suffering. And I think when you fall in love, you think you're exceptional in your love and it's going to somehow transcend every human problem but the fact is that like being alive involves screwing up and marriage definitely involves screwing up um there's no way around it hmm. uh so refreshing it's like again it feels very buddhist but it's probably just human um that you're not selling or pushing something it's not like self-help like you said you know there aren't the the notion that your younger self wouldn't have listened to yourself now yeah is so uh true and kind of delightful it's funny and that's what I that's what I love. I think from a guy's perspective, reading your book or the modern love essays, it's so fun to read Good. because you're not bullshitting us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, what I would have tried to sell my younger self on was that um, failure is inevitable 
and perfection. There's perfection only in death. It's impossible to hit perfection in any aspect of your life, much less something that involves an intimate relationship with another human being who is also fallible. Um, so I would try to say that I wouldn't have listened, but maybe I would, re would have remembered later when I had my first horrible fight um, or, or trauma or devastation of whatever kind, I would have maybe remembered, oh yeah, it's impossible to be perfect. So, and then, you know, I guess I, I've I kind of got to ask this of you live, but when you're having a really hard time or in the middle of that fight with someone who you thought you loved and you thought they loved you and you thought everything would be okay and this was a wonderful thing and then suddenly you're like arguing and almost you, in that moment, you almost like hate or resent that person. Who, yeah. right. <laughs> what kind of, what gets you over that hump or what what keeps you going? Well, I think it's so funny what you because you said at the reading that that's sort of your that's your weak, weakness, right? Because you hit yeah. that and you're like, why would I stay in this? And I think it's a really valuable question. Um, I think if you're married, it's a lot harder to leave. So when I was single, I'd get in that place and I would leave, like I would right. never stick it out. But then being married, it's a lot harder, right? Having a kid and all that. Right, so right. So you stay. You like go to bed mad and you wake up the next day. And then you maybe fight some more and then you fight some more. And then, you know, a week later, you're having like an awesome time at a baseball game. Right. And it's like it never happened or like you're closer because it happened. So I think it's just realizing it's part of the texture of life to have this conflict. Yeah. Um, and you just have to try not to get stuck in it, I think. I love that. Yeah. In Buddhism, they, I mentioned this to you. Um, they say a marriage or a commitment is like being a snake in a bamboo tube. You can't turn around. Right, which we just so have very sexual. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which I belatedly realized, but um, but that commitment forces you, forces us, any of us, past the sort of dilettantish way that I may have and we may have related to dating. Yeah, I definitely did too. Yeah, and I think uh, it's good. It forces you to confront things about yourself. Even this um, this Christian Episcopal priest told me that marriage holds a mirror up to you, and he said, "Without that mirror." I'm doomed because I never would see what a schmuck I am, but then I have that mirror, and so I'm able to make myself better. And I think that's kind of lovely. That is lovely. Yeah, that the um, your partner, they say in Buddhism, your partner is the only person kind of committed or stuck enough to bother yeah. to tell you the full truth about right. you. exactly. And it can With be some very love. pleasant to hear sometimes because <laughs> we like. It can be very unpleasant to hear it sometimes. We like to think we're better than we are. We like to think right. we're perfect. Right. Yeah, exactly. Our vanity. I mean, I guess marriage is a big threat to our vanity or our cozy sense of self. Yeah, because they also see you, like, when you're dating, they only see you cute, right? They only see you in your date clothes or out of your date clothes. But, like, right. when you up, they don't see you when you're sick and when you're, you've had a heart right. or you've run through depression or you've gained 100 pounds or whatever it is that you, your spouse will see they, you, a lot to take, for your ego to take. Yeah, it's starting to echo a lot. But um, I, uh, yeah, it's sort of like an Instagram. We show like our prettiest angles and our best filter and our cool, you know, the coolest of eight photos taken of us. And we don't even, if we're in a group photo, we don't even look at their expressions. We just look at how we look. Yeah. That's kind of how dating is. We just put our best self forward. That's true. And then, Within a couple of weeks, they're going to see us, you know, whatever, yeah. laying around on the couch with right. crumbs on our shirt. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, Ada, uh, I'm going to um, wrap up because I think we're kind of losing sound, which okay. is a bummer. Yeah. But um, this is a wonderful, wonderful, delightful, and very wise book. So you're just such a cool human being. So are you. Um, and I really recommend it to everyone. I hope I'm holding that up right. Uh, <laughs> well. wedding, wedding Toasts I'll Never Give by Ada Calhoun. And, um, and uh, yeah, I just want to thank you for being. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, and thanks for awesome. being I had so much fun with you. It was really fun. Yeah. yeah, likewise. Well, thank you for the invite. That was delightful. Yeah, so if people want more, check out this book, Wedding Toasts I'll Never Give. And your other book, which I just started reading this morning, St. Mark's right. is Dead. Yeah. It's so exciting. It's so cool. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we could do a whole interview on that. Like the whole notion that everyone feels like the town or the neighborhood they knew is falling apart and dying. And 
yeah, everything new is horrible and everything old was perfect and brilliant. Yep. We're going through that in Boulder as well. So everywhere. Yeah. Well, definitely in New York here. Yeah. Right out my window. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Well, Ada, thank you so much. Thanks again. You're awesome. And everyone check out this book, Wedding Toasts I'll Never Give. Okay. Bye. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Thanks, Ada.